So, uh, I'm Kashyap, I'm one of the co-founders at Yocket. So, we promised uh, that, you know, one of the co-founders will be here today at the Prodigy Finance, uh, you know, event. So, here I am and we have at our office today, Rishabh Goel. Let's welcome him. Hi, Rishabh. How hey. Are you thank you, everyone, and thank you, Yocket, for having me here. But coming back to students and going abroad, uh, more and more students are going abroad every year. And what's most exciting to me personally is more greater percentage of students going abroad from India are looking at education loans to fund their own education. Which means that the funding criteria, the funding barrier is reducing like every year. And that's what Prodigy Finance is basically about. We're here to democratize education by removing all funding criteria about having maybe family wealth or having a collateral or co-signer basically allowing you to to attend your education simply on your own ability. Alright, that's good. Great to know. Okay, so I think we have certain results on the polls yet, so let's let's see what will, what results we have here. Okay, so I, I guess a lot of uh, students, you know, they've heard of it but don't know it very well. That's that's the majority opinion. There are some of them who, who don't know about policy finance at all. So those who don't know about us, thank you so much for coming in and uh, yeah, today's webinar is about you guys understanding what Prodigy Finance is and how we could be the right choice for you. Uh, while we publish the results very soon, what we're seeing is most of you guys do not know someone who is borrowed from Prodigy Finance and that, that makes a lot of sense because even though the company is 11 years old and we've been lending for a long time, we started lending to engineering students very, very recently. In 2017, we started lending to top 20 engineering schools in the US. And it's only 12 months ago when we started lending to top 100 engineering schools in the US. So we have been lending for a long time. We have supported 15,000 students. We have dispersed over $700 million. Both of those numbers are huge, massive numbers. But majority of that has been in the MBA segment. So if you look at MBA programs globally, we fund the top 100 and we've supported a lot of them. Uh, but in the engineering, we're still new and uh, it's great to see a uh, lot of people showing interest towards Prodigy Finance. Uh, help us understand the Prodigy product first of all. Uh, sure. So uh, this might take, uh, I might take a couple of minutes or more to really um, talk about it. Um, back in 2006, our founders were international students in France at a business school called NCI. Now, our founder was working in Malaysia uh, as a South African. The Malaysian bank said, no, you can't take a loan from us because you're not a Malaysian and you're not going to study Malaysia. Okay, that's fine. Then he went to South Africa and he said, hey, I'm a South African going to study in the, in the France and I want a loan for education at a business school which was ranked number two back then and number three as of today. It's a great school, but, uh, could you give me an education loan? And they basically said no, uh, unless you put up a huge property or a collateral with us. He didn't have that. So he went to France and he went to the French banks and said, hey, INSEAD is the best business school in France. It's ranked number two. It graduates you exceptionally well in the future. Can you give me a loan to study here? And the French man said, we don't know who you are. We don't know if you continue in France, so we're not going to give you a loan. And this is a problem that is not just true for South Africa. It's very, very true for India as well. If you go to a, a bank in India, a bank, if you take a loan from them, the loan agreement from a bank or an NBFC by default is eligible to be enforced only on Indian soil. So by you, by virtue of leaving the country, the loan agreement is not valid outside of India. And since it's not valid, they either require a collateral, a house, that's typically what the banks require, or an NBFC would ask for a co-borrower which has an exceptionally high salary slash um, credit score, uh, on which basis they, um, they believe that they will be responsible repayers, will not leave the country, and give a limited amount as a loan towards you. Okay, so that's the reason for providing you know, loans without collateral. So that's the reason why we provide, that's the reason why our founders started Prodigy Finance, loans without collateral and co-signer, 
But before starting Prodigy Finance, we had to uh, come up with two, three solutions to uh, counter these problems you had. Number one was your loan agreement not being valid outside of India. We see in the news about people who do not want to come back to India because if they come back to India, they will have to repay their loans which they are not doing right now. Okay, that, and that's why they're doing extradition deed, treaties, etc. Now for us at Prodigy Finance, our loan agreement is uniquely enforceable in 150 countries. No matter where you are, be it US, be it Canada, be it Australia, Ghana, South Africa, India, China, or any of those 142 other countries, no matter where you are, we can enforce a loan agreement. We have gone to some of those countries and have actually enforced a loan agreement. That happens when you have 15,000 students, out of which a couple of times in India. Now, this, this ability to ha enforce a loan everywhere means that we are not bound by collateral or we do not require a co-signer to watch for you. However, if we don't have a collateral co-signer, how do we understand what is the right interest rate and the loan size for you? So that's, if I had a collateral, I would say, if your collateral is one crore, I can give you a percentage of that. Or if I look at a co-signer's salary, I can make out how much you can repay from there. We don't, get, we don't look at either of, so either of those data points. So what we actually do is, we know that the purpose of education is multifold. It could be, you know, to improve your CV, to, you know, lead your life somewhere else outside of India, improve your marriage prospects, or most importantly, uh, is to get a better job. A job which is more high paying. That is the essential purpose of education. And whenever you go and attend your top education, your post-master's earning increases. You're, you're likely to earn much, much higher than what you are currently earning right now or you could be earning right now. So for every school, just like in India you have colleges with placement data, every school has recruitment statistics which tells us and them what is the outgoing salary of their students. We get that data, we supplement with a lot of government data and other NGO data and with that we are able to basically understand for a certain profile going to a certain university and program what is your future income? If say, hypothetically, you're expected to $100,000 in the US, and you can pay back, uh, we assume we can pay back $80,000, which means per month, if you divide by 12, it comes to $1,500. So $1,500 per month, that's basically your EMI. And I just calculated your EMI, um, hiding a lot of the data science that happens on the back end. So if I know your EMI, if I'm, the, if I'm determining the number of months, I calculate what is a loan you can actually afford today without collateral, without co-signer, simply on your merit, simply on your ability of what you will be in the future. And that is basically what Prodigy Finance is. That's really interesting. Like it's, it's using all the you know modern technologies these days, which you know uh, many of these guys are probably also interested into data science, and you know they would really want to. Uh, know more about that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> every year we get a lot of our customers who want to come for internships with us on the data science part. It's, it's oh. very exciting. Oh, yeah, that, that's really yeah. So uh, the next question that you know keeps coming uh, to us from the students is that Prodigy Finance keeps talking about APR, hmm. whereas the Indian lenders they talk about ROI. So what is what are these terms and you know how does it work? So ROI has two terms, uh, two meanings for that term. Uh, it could be an, it could mean return on investment, uh, but banks usually mean rate of interest. Uh, so as a loan, you have a rate of interest, and interest is charged on the principal, on the interest rate, and the time for which it is elapsed. So your interest is not the same as your rate of interest. Because if your principal is higher, or if you end up borrowing earlier on, then you will be charged more interest. Simple. The other, the problem with uh, the rate of interest or ROI, ROI is, does it tell you the full cost of the loan or not? Now, if I were to pick up an example, uh, say you have one lender which gives you a 10%, mm -hmm. okay, simple interest, okay. and there is no fee attached at all, okay, okay. either upfront or hidden. Mm -hmm. That's 10%, simple interest, no fees anywhere. Example one. Example two is you have 9%, you have compound interest, and you have a lot of fees. You might have insurance, you might have processing fee, you might have disbursement charges, 
you might have conversion charges from INR to USD and back from USD to INR uh, and all of these fees add up in the cases uh, so how do you actually compare right. maybe the impact of compound and those uh, fees is more than the additional 1% that the other lender is borrowing in that case 10% is cheaper in some cases it might not be how do you really understand and that is where APR comes in so for APR, we basically find out what is the total cost of your loan, the total cost including how interest is calculated, plus all the fees attached, be it upfront, we only have upfront, but others might not, others might have other fees as well. Uh, combine all of it into a single annual number, an annual percentage rate, APR, annual percentage rate. A single number which tells me if I were to convert this loan into an interest rate, a simple interest, this is what it would be. Oh, okay. Alright, so I guess still a lot of complications would be involved from the student's side. I mean, uh, I, I'm sure they would have understood how APR is calculated in a, in, to, a, to an extent. But uh, the student would definitely require to you know, do some kind of uh, calculations when they compare loans, right? Yes, so uh, the a the way APR is calculated, it's a standardized process in the West. Now, Prodigy Finance is a UK-based lender. Uh, we have lent to 132 nationalities based out of our lending license in the UK, London. And we're governed by the London um, Financial Authority, which is a financial conduct authority. It's the equivalent of SEBI in the India. So they have a way of how APR is calculated. Now, unfortunately, in India, we do not have this uh, facility at the moment. So banks are not required to reveal their fees upfront. Mm -hmm. Now, from what I understand, talking to a lot of our customers, when they go to other lenders, it could be uh, they usually pay a one and a half percent processing fee. Then they have a one and a half percent insurance. Then they have disbursement charges that, that vary depending on the negotiation and other things. Then you have an FX conversion cost where if you ask the lender to disperse on your behalf, they use the conversion rate of their choice. Uh, if the bank, uh, if the Google rate is 70, that doesn't mean the, uh, the conversion happens at 70. It usually happens at a higher rate. And it might happen at 71, it might happen at 70.5, it might happen at 71.5, but it's important for you to understand like, what rate is being charged because that differential, uh, say if you're being charged 71.5 instead of 70, that's a 2% fee you're paying just on the disbursement and you're not even thinking about it. Right. That's, that's kind of a hidden cost which never just, it's, it's actually not even detectable in terms of costs. But uh, it's actually a hidden cost. Yes, that's a hidden cost. And with APR, if you have a, ever had a hidden cost, you would, uh, it would be incorporated in the concept. So if you, for you, if you want to understand what APR means to you, number one, if we, by virtue of us revealing the APR, there is no hidden cost with us. We have a single 2.5% admin fee. It might sound a bit high because other banks have a 1.5% processing fee, but then we don't have insurance, we don't have any of the other things which they might have. That's A. Now, now two is that uh, if you want to compare loan products, either you can calculate APR for a local lender, which can be tough. They are not required to reveal it. They might not even know how to do it, unfortunately. Uh, but what I would say is that if the rate of interest is not your APR, Please, please do not mistake APR as a rate of interest. If your interest rate that Prodigy Finance gives you is 10% and the APR is 10.7%, then your interest rate is 10% only. Do not use our APR and compare that with a local lender's interest rate. Do not use, the, if their ROI is 11, or a better example is if their ROI is 10 and a half, our ROI is 10% and APR is 10.7, Please do not use APR and say that we are more expensive than them. Please look at the interest rate, other fees. Might not be an exact science, but do not mistake the APR for ROI. Okay. That, that, was, that makes things more clear. Point is that uh, unlike any other lender, uh, the whole Prodigy Finance application, the loan process, resides on a website. 
So there is no interaction in person, there is no office or there is no reason for you to meet someone from Prodigy Finance in person. You do everything, everything online. We are a fintech company, uh, financial technology, using technology to provide a better financial service. Uh, reflects in two ways. Number one is having a new data model using data science to give loans to the Galactic Cosigner, but also using net, internet, and everything to make life much easier for you. Uh, so, if to take a loan for Prodigy Finance, everything happens on the magic happens on prodigyfinance.com. Right. So, uh, if you haven't checked it yet, I would suggest you should, you know, you guys should just go on to the website and have a look at it. And uh, if, when you guys do log on, you'll notice that you know uh, there are certain colleges, universities which are listed on Prodigy Finance's website. So these are the universities that Prodigy Finance supports. So I would like to ask you more about that. You know, like what are the colleges that you support, and uh, why do you have a selected set of universities there? You know. Absolutely. So uh, we have a select list of universities and select list of programs. Uh, we primarily lend in. Uh, we primarily lend to business schools and engineering schools. These programs and universities have a very structured post master's career path. With a structured career path, we can very reliably predict what your post master's income will be and what you would be likely to earn slash achieve in the future. Other programs might not be that clear. So we do mainly those and some select programs in law, policy, and healthcare. Now, why only select programs? Um, as I said, we are not looking at collateral, we are not looking at cosigner, we look at data. So for now, we have uh, we understand the top 100 MS or STEM universities in the US. We understand them well. We understand them from a data point of view. We understand them from a uh, visa regulation point of view and this is a space where we feel comfortable. This is a space where we have confidence in our data model and not just us actually, our investors as well. So we have some who give VC funding to us, venture capitalists, and we have some who give us the loan amount that we lend to you. So in 2018, we borrowed $1 billion from a bunch of global investment banks, you might know a few of them, uh, Goldman Sachs, Deutsche Bank, Credit Suisse, and a few others, all of them pooled together and gave us $1 billion to borrow, uh, to lend to international students attending top programs globally with a very specific focus on engineering programs in the US. We have dispersed uh, $700 million, uh, we call additional $1 billion. so we are very, very excited about the growth opportunity. Uh, we have a lot of money with us, the problem now is uh, making sure people know about us and understand what it is, so we definitely don't have any liquidity crisis, uh, just to speak, uh, but, but we are restricting ourselves in a playground that we understand really well and can lend to students without affecting our default rates. Wow, this, this is the most interesting part, I think. So, you guys are lending without collateral, without cosigner to these students, you know, and you have chosen your set of universities and you know that these students won't default. Does that say something about the placements? Um, so, the reality is that it's, there is no direct correlation between placements and the rankings. Okay, the rankings for engineering programs and schools are often driven by the research parameters. While we are looking at placements, the jobs, they might, they usually are correlated, but they might not be. And there's one specific example which pains me personally is of uh, San Jose State University, where um, it's a great program, it's a great school. The students do really well after graduating. We know the placement data. Uh, it, you, you guys are going to do well, but the problem is it's not in the top 100 and for now we are just limiting ourselves in that top 100 list which is defined by the US news and this is also a good list that not only do we understand well, but it gets easy to understand for our investors as well. It's easy for someone sitting in Goldman Sachs who's investing in us 
to just look at a top 100 list rather than looking at each university specifically. Okay. Okay, so the next thing that we would want to know is, uh, you know, do you provide a 100% loan or is there some margin money? And if you could also explain the term margin money because a lot of... If you're doing a program which is in the business school, say Masters in Business Analytics, Masters in Information Systems, Masters in Finance, etc., even if they're a STEM degree, you're eligible to apply up to 80% of the total amount. Okay, so the rest 20 has to come from yourself, can't be another loan. Okay, the reasons for that mostly is investor choices. Uh, but the most important thing there is the word up to. You're eligible to apply up to a certain amount, 100% or 80%. Just because you're eligible to apply up to a certain amount does not mean we will automatically approve whatever amount you ask from us. Okay. If you ask for 100% at a certain school, uh, your application data will actually go into an algorithm which will understand what your postmaster's income would be. We basically plot your incoming profile with the outgoing salary. If, the out, if that plotting with the outgoing salary, with the EMI that we come up with, is, is more than what the 100% is, then you'd be comfortable giving 100%. Mm -hmm. In case that EMI is less than 100%, then we'll come back to you and we'll give you a scalar score under review, saying that, hey, uh, maybe the amount you've asked for is a bit too much, given your postmaster's expected uh, income, uh, would you be comfortable with a lower amount? Okay, say if the total cost is hundred thousand, you ask for hundred thousand, or say fifty lakhs, you ask for fifty lakhs. We come back and say we want to give you just forty-five lakhs because that's what we are comfortable with. Okay, that's absolutely fine. What you need to do is you can, if you if you're comfortable with that, you can accept it. But you will need to show us how you are funding the rest of the five lakhs. Okay. Now the reason for that, from our point of view, is a we need to make sure you have enough money to graduate, okay? And that definition, we look at the university definition, okay? If you do not have enough money to graduate, if you do not check that, how will we know that you have enough money to graduate and then earn that salary on which basis you have taken the loan, okay? If we don't know that, then the whole concept of property finance, where you come to your education, uh, that, that sanity check is not done. That's A. The B part is the same question on how are you funding the rest of the amount which is not coming from a loan will be asked by I-20 officials as well as your visa officials. If you borrow from property finance, we already do that check for you. Okay, so if you take a property finance letter with, uh, for your visa process, if we have already made uh, a lot of homework activities which makes you more financially secure uh, when you go for visa. Okay. Now coming back to the margin money part, so the uh, a definition that I know and understand is if you take a 50 lakh loan and the margin money is 10%, then out of that 50 lakh loan, you can actually disperse only 40 lakh. Okay, and the 10 lakh you need to put up on your own. The loan amount is 50, but you actually can disperse only 40. If that's the definition of margin money, then there is no margin money with property finance. If you are taking a loan of 45 lakhs or $80,000, we will disperse the full amount to you. Right, so so you, it's usually like if it's like a 100 rupee loan and if you have 20% margin money, the 20% has to come from you. That's the margin money concept usually with the local lenders. Okay, so Prodigy Finance, you're saying that if it's a $100 loan, you get the entire $100 and you don't have to commit to the, you know, uh, $20 extra. You get exactly what you're borrowing. Right. Okay, so if you could just throw some light on how the process works, how the disbursements happen. Uh, sure, so this might uh, be a long one. I'll try to be quick. <laughs> so so let's, let's, if you want, we could split that up, you know, like yeah. maybe the first question could be uh, when should the students apply and what are the first steps for that? Okay, awesome. So I, I love that. So. The whole magic happens on the website, prodigyfinance.com, okay? You need to submit an initial application, and with that initial application, we understand what is your postmaster's income, okay? The application that you get is, uh, 
the application that you submit is without any fee, without any documentation, without anything. Okay, it's just 15 minutes or 30 minutes of your time. You submit the application and you know exactly what Prodigy Finance is willing to offer you, provided you are honest with your application. Okay, so you go to our website, you submit the application, you see what it is, and once you submit the application, you know exactly what Prodigy Finance is offering. If you like what we offer from the provision offer from the court, you accept it and then you submit documents to verify. Now, a very important qualifier there is for the initial application, you do not need an argument letter. Okay, and because you don't need an argument letter, you can submit uh, the application at any point of time. Okay, if while you're waiting for your argument, so if you got an application today, uh, sorry, if, if you have submitted an application to the university and you're waiting your argument results, uh, and say they come, expect you to come in March 15th, mm. but but maybe you want to figure out your finances right now. So you can submit the initial application. You know exactly how much amount Prodigy Finance is willing to offer you today. And once you get your argument, you accept the offer, you submit uh, other verification documents, and with that supporting documentation, you get a confirmed loan, which you can use for I-20 and Visa. Okay. okay. Now, um, in terms of the verification documents, Number one thing is it all happens online. You need to either send PDFs or scan copies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, number okay, two. So even scan copies, PDFs, everything is fine. They don't need to really get uh, physical documents, is it? There is no physical documentation. Okay. Okay. That's great. There's no physical documentation. It all happens online. Okay. And by virtue of us not having a collateral or cosigner, I mean, what actually happens is the number of documents that are required for us to check become way fewer. Okay, we first do a KYC check because every lender needs to do that. Uh, then we do checks for if you have any proof of savings, if you have any proof of um, salary, scholarships, etc. And then we ask you to upload a credit report. Okay, not the score, a credit report. Okay, we do not really care about the credit score. It's not a part of the application. Your loan, loan amount is not a function of your credit score. We do not want to know anything about your parents. We do not want to know their credit score. We do not want to know their credit history. We want to check, do you have any outstanding loan at your name or not? Mm -hmm. In case you do, then the future EMI will function, will change accordingly. If you don't have any loans on your name, perfect. All you need to do is submit a credit report with us with proof that whatever it is, and accordingly we'll assess your loan. Okay, so um, so since it's an entirely an online process, uh, I guess a few students would be worried about the customer service. So yep. if you could throw some light on that, I, I'll just put in a poll as, as well. You know, okay, uh, has anyone tried the customer service? Because I've heard that it's really great. Thanks. Uh, the whole Prodigy Finance model is very different. So traditionally, you have banks where you have to go to their office and you do everything at their office or you have other NBFCs where they will come to your home and they are there on the phone and you're assigned a person who will answer everything for you. The way Progeny Finance works is and we have supported 15,000 students is we do everything online and we do it from a centralized system. There are three ways to reach out to a customer support. Number one is there's an email service. So you can email info at any questions you have about Prodigy Finance, etc., you can email us and we typically typically tend to respond within two business days. That's option number one. Option number two is something called live chat. Live chat, to break it down, is simply like a WhatsApp option within the Prodigy Finance website. So once you register, you can see the live chat pop up in the bottom. It's a blue button. Click on the blue button and you can access the live chat. And in that live chat, you can have a live conversation with our team. So if you are submitting the application and you have questions, what should I, what is the exact value that I should put here? Or even if you don't have questions, some people want to double check. They're like, my loan terms depend on this application. I want to double check, am I doing the right thing or not? Mm. And you can do that while you're 
some, while you're filling in the application, you can have a live chat with the uh, customer support and ask them all the questions you have uh, as you want. And thirdly, we have a toll-free number. Uh, so it's, it's, I'm glad to see a lot of people have used the toll-free number. Uh, so you can call up the toll-free number at any point of time from 2.30 p.m. Monday afternoon to I think around same time Saturday. So basically it doesn't work on the weekends. It works 24 into 5. 24 hours every weekday uh, UK guidance. So you can call us at any point of time. You can live chat. You can reach out to us. Uh, all of your questions would be addressed there. On top of that, uh, we are also very accessible here in India. Two ways. We do a lot of webinars. We do our own webinars like uh, on our platform. Then we do webinars with uh, people in the industry like York Hill. Uh, the second is we do information sessions in the city. So like for example, uh, earlier this month I was in Jaipur, I was in Indore, I was in Ahmedabad, Baroda, uh, my colleagues were in uh, Bangalore, Mumbai, uh, Hyderabad, Delhi, Gurgaon, uh, all the big cities, Kolkata. So we do a lot of uh, live information sessions. And in those sessions, we address queries about your brand and our product. But if you have any queries about your application, I cannot help you with that. That has to go to the customer support. Okay. A third way you can stay in touch with us is actually uh, on different forums. Uh, so we have some presence on WhatsApp. Uh, we also have an official account on Yorkit. So on Yorkit forums, uh, there's also a group uh, on your cake for education loans and we are very active there and we often respond on the Facebook group as well. So we make sure we are available and um, help you out as much as we as much as you want. So I, my guess was right about the customer service because I have some comments coming in. One of the real users saying that Prodigy Finance customer support is as good as Amazon is. I'll give this feedback to our customer support. <laughs> they will be so excited and so racked to hear that. Alright, so the most common question that comes in right after, you know, all of this information is that what, how does the USD versus INR loan compare? Yes, and it's not hard to, it's not easy to predict, it's hard to predict, but the reality is rupee can go up, it can go down. I know people personally, uh, when I started working in 2015, uh, who borrowed from, uh, from India at 66 rupees, and ended up repaying back at 62. Okay, so if you borrow an INR, it can end up being more expensive for you. Okay, that's a risk you you have to take on you. Okay, if you borrow in USD, there is no risk. Okay, you know exactly what you're borrowing for and exactly what you're repaying. It doesn't change. Okay, the second thing is, and let us assume <laughs> like rupee depreciates. Okay. And this is a great example because uh, last year, just before students were going to the US, rupee fell a lot. Okay, <coughs> what happened was students realized that whatever amount they borrowed in INR from the Indian lenders, so if they took 40 lakh loan, which meant 60,000 dollars, with the rupee falling, it now could buy them only 55, 54,000 mm. dollars. Okay. If their cost of attendance was 55 and they kept a buffer of $5,000, suddenly their INR loan was not enough. Okay, They borrowed something from India and they realized that that is not going to be enough for them to fulfill their education. And because it's not enough, a lot of students switched over to project finance last year just before uh, them leaving for US. A scarier example is, what if you are in year two? Okay, and you have borrowed 40 lakhs, okay, and you spent initially, and then the rupee depreciates, and now you don't have enough money. Okay, it could mean three things. One is you go to your parents and ask for more money, which is financial stress for them, because we are talking in lakhs. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has lakhs in their bank deposits or accounts like that. Number two is it creates a lot of stress just like that, because you need to figure out everything while you're studying. And number three is, what if you don't have that money, okay? And if you don't have that money, you're basically risking dropping all of your MS just because you took a loan in INR, okay? You spend so much effort, you get your GRE, your 
applications, your SOP, your loan, your visa, everything. You have been doing this for so many years, all to realize like, oh my God, I can't even complete your education. That sounds to me a massive emotional risk. Not just a financial, a massive emotional risk. Do you want to take that? Uh, a lot of our customers say no. Right, that's quite unfortunate. I mean, the instances that you pointed out that students have taken the loan in INR and then the, due to the rupee fluctuations, uh, you know, they had to, <coughs> it affected their studies and their borrowings. That's really unfortunate. Uh, if, I mean, these, these calculations are a little bit complex. Uh, if you have some example or, you know, something, some kind of documentation which you could share with the students after the webinar, that would be great, you know, it, it would uh, understand the entire maths behind this uh, at ease, you know, it's a um, difficult. If it's I can possible. understand uh, where you're coming from and a lot of our customers do ask for the math, but the reality is uh, uh, we are not in the business of predicting what USD INR will be. Right. Uh, we have an example uh, on Quora. Uh, and as a follow-up, we can share that example with you on how if rupee changes with actual numbers from last year, with the change in rupee, you might actually end up not uh, finishing your education. Okay, so that can, would yeah, that would be great. And yes, these guys can just refer to some you know text at their own uh, pace. So. Yes, so in a follow-up, we'll probably add that Quora link. Okay. All right, so let's move on to the questions from the users then. Alright, I see so many questions, uh, uh, yes. Okay, so let's see, okay, the first question was about the USD loan. You know, yes, so the reality is if you have a USD loan, you have less problems because even the visa officials are aware of potential FX fluctuations. So they also have a question in mind, what if you have an INR loan and what if it's not enough? So uh, you have all the lenders recommending 1.5 times. And that's because they want to make sure the INR fluctuation doesn't affect. A corollary to that is if you take a collateral loan, then you can no longer show your house as a reason for you to come back to India because the house is no longer against your name, it's with the bank. Mm. Okay, so that actually reduces your uh, reasons for coming back to India. Okay. And being a no collateral loan, that, that, that shows you're driven, you're professionally driven, you want to achieve things on your own, and yeah, you'd be driven to have a good professional life. Okay. So the next question is, uh, I have some savings. Can I start paying back my loans before completing my graduation? Perfect question. So uh, with Prodigy Finance, you do not need to pay a single cent, not a single cent, to Prodigy Finance till six months after graduation. Okay, the idea is you're a student, uh, you are figuring out your life, your education, after graduation, we give you six months to second in your postmaster's uh, life, and then you start repaying every month. However, if you want to prepay at any point of time, be it the first month of your education, or a few months before you are supposed to start paying your EMI, you can prepay at any point of time. You know the best part about prepayment? Actually, there are two. Number one is there is no prepayment penalty, and interest is charged on a reducing balance. So if you prepay early, you save time and money. The number two is, uh, is that we have amazing apps on Android and iOS uh, where you can manage all of your repayments, repayments from a touch of your fingers. Okay, that's great. Okay, this is an interesting question. Do we get any tax benefits in the US if we, are, if we have a loan from Prodigy? Um, I leave it to say that as a UK based lender we cannot comment. We know some people who have availed tax benefits and we know some people who have not. I would recommend you to reach out to a legal expert of tax in the US. Uh, we are not uh, the expert in, experts in this and we do not have jurisdiction to comment on this. Okay. Uh, could you give the students an idea of what parameters do you look at while you know, considering the loan? If I told you, you would start another Prodigy Finance, <laughs> right? Uh, jokes apart, uh, I cannot reveal you the details, but I can give you a broad idea of how it works. Number one is, it's very different from Indian lenders. Uh, they might look at your undergrad scores, your GPA, your GRE very strongly. 
for us, it's more about what is the quality of the education, and if the education university or program believes you're the right person for them mm -hmm. to attend their class, then, then they know that better than us, okay? So we leave it at that. For us, that's a factor, but we also look at a lot of other factors. It totals you over 50 factors. All of them are part of the application. If you want to lower your loan terms today, and you have, say, you've got an argument or you're not irrespective, you need to go to our website and submit the application, okay? Everything you put in the application is a factor. Now, a single factor moves a needle. Will interest rate change because of one single factor? Maybe, maybe not. Most probably not. It's a combination of a lot of things. But to know your actual rate, to know your actual loan size, uh, hop onto a website and submit the application. So a few, a few students have been saying that, you know, I got some admit or, you know, uh, maybe I will get an admit very soon and I registered on the Prodigy Finance website. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to know a provisional loan code. So how do yes. you get, how do you do that? Yes. So there's a different application for each university and each program. Because if you think about it, each program has a different recruitment data. Okay. Has different cost of attendance, has different needs from a loan point of view. You can submit five applications at any point of time. You can have five concurrent applications. If you want to submit more, you can cancel one and, and submit more applications. To submit the application, you need to go to the website and start the application. Okay. So if you go to the uh, web page, there is a blue button called Get a Loan. When you click on Get a Loan, you will go to a Start an Application page where you submit the application. Um, so one more question that, uh, what is LIBOR? Do you want to take that? Yes, yes, that's a great question and thank you for asking it. Reality is that most loans in the world are variable, okay? They float on a variable rate. When it comes to um, an Indian bank, they float on something called MCLR which Kashyap is marginal cost of lending rate. Okay. okay. This is a rate at which they figure out this is my cost of borrowing. Mm -hmm. And on top of that borrowing, they add a premium and they do that. So for SBI, it would be MCLR plus a margin. Right. Okay. As the MCLR goes up and down, up and down, your interest rates will keep going up and down, up and down. Okay. okay. The calculation for MCLR is very transparent. It is defined by the RBI and every bank is required to reveal it and be upfront about it. Okay. It's a well-governed definition. Mm -hmm. Every personal loan in India is a variable rate. Okay, when it comes from a bank. Okay. If you're looking at NBFCs, NBFCs do not borrow from RBI. They borrow from other financial institutions. Mm -hmm. Like for example, Prodigy Finance borrowed from Goldman Sachs. Okay, we borrowed one billion dollars last year at a certain interest rate, and MCL, uh, sorry, and Indian NBFCs borrow from other financial institutions. Now they also have a variable rate. They link it to their cost of borrowing. Okay, and as of now, I've tried to understand. I do not understand what the variable rate is, unfortunately. Um, I should probably work with one of them, <laughs> jokes apart. <laughs> but, uh, so I don't really understand what it is, so I would highly encourage you to go and ask them what their variable rate is. But they also have a variable rate. Uh, the other challenge I see with them is, which I'm also trying to understand, is how do they change the variable rate? Right now, there is no governed methodology from the RBI or SEBI for NBFCs. They have it for banks, like Access Bank, as we are big private or public. If you're a bank, there's a there's a very defined methodology, not for NBFCs, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, right now, with the mini liquidity crisis going on, they their cost might be going up and down. Mm -hmm. Now for us, we are a UK-based lender, and we use a variable rate called LIBOR. Okay, this is again a well-defined method. Uh, it, is, it is a rate at which banks sitting in UK, in different currencies, borrow from each other. And this is a base rate for over, uh, for a few trillion loans in the world. A few, assuming that you are an honest person and the application you have submitted is correct, and secondly, you will be attending that specific university program, okay? So if you want to get an I-20, we do not recommend using that letter. 
Okay, because that letter has not been verified by us, we have not looked at the documentation. That is a conditional letter. That is condition on A, your information be correct, and B, that you will attend that program. Okay, when the ver document verification, we verify these two things. If there was something incorrect with the application, we will reassess you. Okay. It might mean the same terms again, it might mean slightly different terms, so we will have to reassess you. That's A. B, if in case you incorrectly applied to a different program, but you actually wanted to go somewhere else, and it happens, then we will have to assess you again. But irrespective, only when you get a confirmed loan, a confirmed loan letter, can you use that for I-20 visa. Now the key point here is, you, we give you a loan letter only for one university, a confirmed loan only for one university. If you want multiple I-20, um, that's going to be a ch bit challenging. If you want to be, uh, um, how are you, what's the right term? Do you want to be key key, maybe, or, or like, uh, if, you're, if you really want, or if you really, really want multiple I-20s, you can get a confirmed loan for University A. Mm -hmm. You can ask us to cancel it. You can get another confirmed loan for University B and so on. So you'll have multiple loan letters, uh, but that's something that, yeah, I don't know if I should recommend. Okay. Better decide the university by then, I guess. Yes, yes. And that should be the usual choice. I mean, it shouldn't be very difficult, you know, because that's the standard process. I mean, most of the students, uh, when once all the admits are there, most of the students happen to decide which university is the best for them. Yes, yes. and. Uh, I, I wanted to add something to this, is uh, something I forgot, uh, because I just rem remember that you have not touched on disbursement, so maybe... Yeah, so that, that's the next question, yeah. when, you know, when will the amount be dispersed, dispersed to the university and, uh, uh, you know, what's the process? Sure, so uh, the dispersing process with Prodigy Finance is completely different from usual local lenders in India. Okay, number one is, we always disperse your money to the university. So every university has a financial aid office. Right. The same office does your I-20. Mm -hmm. And we give the money to the financial office directly. Okay. okay. The reason, there are multiple reasons. Most importantly for us is, we will first check with the financial aid office, are you an actual student? And are you the right student or not? Okay. And they confirm that. And once they confirm, we give the money to them. Okay, so this makes sure that if there's any risk of A, you know, are you, the documents are correct or not, maybe it's forged, maybe it's not, mm -hmm. mostly it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we still need to avoid that risk. So yeah, in any of those cases, that risk is completely eliminated. Okay. Second is the fact that the money is always used for education. Okay, this is an education loan and it is used only for education. Okay, the money is typically for US MS, is dispersed per semester. Okay, we charge interest on outstanding principal. So if you disperse per semester, then your interest is charged on a lower principal. Because initially you'll have lower principal, like if you borrow $80,000 across four semesters, so initially you'll have an outstanding balance of 20, then 40, then 60, then 80. So in the initial months, you'll be charged less. Okay, okay so that's a fair way of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is, in case you have borrowed for living expenses, okay, you will get money from the financial aid office. Okay. And there are usually lots of concerns because that's never how they have dealt with India or Indian lenders. But, uh, uh, Kasha, student lending is a $1.5 trillion economy in the US. Wow. $1.5 trillion. It's a massive, massive thing. And there are well-established mechanisms for student lenders to plug into the university. Okay. It's a very standardized process that student lenders always give money to the university. Okay. Out of that 1.5 million, most of it is domestic students. The money the lenders will give to the university and any money they're taking for living expenses, the university transfers it to the student, to the local account. No questions asked. Doesn't matter if you're living off campus, on campus, nothing. It's, it's your money. America is the land of the free and you have all the freedom you want. Wow. So that's that's how the process works for most of the domestic students there, is it? Yes, yes, and we plug straight into it. So they have well defined mechanisms, we work closely with the university, the financial aid office, and we use the same mechanisms. Okay, and so is it necessary to disburse all the amount that they've you know, been sanctioned? Um, yes and no. 
uh, in the sense that um, we split the loan agreement uh, in an annual basis. Uh, you can the the loan is confirmed on an annual basis, so you get a confirmation for year one and a pre-approval for year two, which is exactly what Visa is also asking. The Visa officials want to know confirmation for year one and a plan for year two. Okay, with us uh, in the university tells us uh, the amount that is required from your name. So they will send you a form, a financial aid office will send you the financial letter where you mention them this is a scholarship, this is a personal funds and this is a loan. So you fill that with them and in case you don't want a loan from us, you have to tell the financial aid office and they will not accept the loan from us. Okay. The beautiful part with property finance is that I said there's a two and a half percent annual fee. Mm. Okay. Say you got, got an RA or PA and you don't want any amount in year two. Okay, the admin fee is charged only for that year's amount. Okay, so if you took year loan, year one loan for 40k mm -hmm. and year two for 40k, total of 80k, two and a half percent of 80,000 dollars is actually 2,000. Okay, we are not going to charge you 2,000 upfront. We are just going to charge you 1,000 dollars for the 40k <coughs> in year one mm -hmm. on the first disbursement of year one. Okay. okay, and if you take year two amount, we'll charge $1,000 again if you take the full amount. If you don't get any amount, no fees charged. So you're saving money and it's more transparent and fair. And if say you change your amount to $20,000, then we'll charge only $500. Okay. All right, quick questions again. So uh, some of the students are still asking, do you only lend to US universities and only the top 100 US universities? So we lend to top 100 in the US for STEM. We like to select programs in the, and schools in the Canada, very, very few. We support top 100 universities for business schools globally, including Indian School of Business uh, right next door, if Hyderabad is next door. <laughs> Maybe it is because we all go to the US. Uh, so Hyderabad and Mohali. Uh, so we, we have supported multiple students there as well. Uh, as long as we're, you're an international student, it's absolutely fine. Okay. To see the complete list, please go to our website. There are more than 400 schools, more than 130 plus universities. I can't remember all of them. I'm not that smart. Uh, but yeah, Google it or check out our website. Okay. Okay, we are almost out of time now. Let's see if there's some you know question that we could. What's the yeah. time taken to submit to get a loan approved from Quality Finance? Yeah. To get a quote, submit a 30 minute application and you get it instantaneously within a few seconds. Okay, so you know exactly what you're getting into. You submit the documents, and to me, you'll be surprised, a lot of students have got, gotten their documents verified within 36 hours. Oh, wow. So, say today morning, they submit the documentation, by tomorrow evening, they have a confirmed loan. Okay, that's, that's super. a lot of people have got it done. There might be some cases where we might do uh, more checks, or like we might take more time to check or there might be follow-ups, we might verify a few things and clarify from you. And in that case, the, we usually say the max time it takes is 10 business days or 2 weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. someone had a question uh, on visa process. Uh, does, the, uh, you know, does the provisional letter from your the Prodigy Finance, does that work with visa? That was one. And can I use the conditional letter to get I-20? Yeah, and these could be probably the last, uh, one of the last questions we'll address today. Yeah. So, and I want to make this very, very clear. Please understand what you require for I-20 and what you require for Visa. Okay, our letter works for both of them, the way it is structured currently. Okay, for I-20, you require liquid funds only for year one. Okay, I-20 amount for, is only for year one, it's actually only for nine months. Mm. So our amount might be more because it includes living expenses for the summer months, the three months of summer, which will not be an I-20. Okay. Okay. okay, I-20 only liquid funds for year one. That's it. That's all you need. Simple. To, to get an I-20, please get the confirmed loan from Progly Finance. Conditional loan does not check for the information in the application does not check for KYC, does not check uh, if you're actually attending that program or not. So, so please get a confirmed loan. Do not use a conditional letter. By definition, by definition, it's a conditional letter. Okay. Number two is for visa. Okay. Now visa officials want confirmed uh, uh, liquid funds for year one, which you sorted out during I-20, and they want a plan for year two. They do not want liquid funds. They do, do not, I wouldn't say the word want, I would say they do not require liquid funds 
for year two. Okay, and because they just want to understand what is your plan, how are you planning to fund your year two education. For Prodigy Finance, we give you a conditional uh, letter. A con uh, it's it's a confirmed loan for year one and a pre-approval for year two. The pre-approval is for us to do a credit check and a financial check. It takes it's a very simple process. And for you is to check do I actually need this amount or not? Maybe I get an I20 or so maybe I got an RA or TA. Irrespective, the amount that you put uh, from our property finance like. And uh, when I end the webinar, I will be sending you to. Uh, you know, a Yocket article about Prodigy Finance, which will give you a lot of more information, uh, you know, about what we've been talking about today here. So, do, do check that out as well. Read the entire article. You, you, you have a more information about how this works. Yes, uh, and we'll also do a follow up email uh, and we'll make sure to include that Quora answer with the, you know, the rupee and USD conversion and how it might be stressful for you. Timur, you know what I love about this poll? Uh, nobody has said no. <laughs> Thank God. No, no, everyone is yes, maybe, yes or maybe, that's it. Yes. Uh, so great, so having, uh, it was a great, good time to have a chat with you today. Uh, thank you for coming over and uh, let's see if we can have more information, more information sessions in the future for these students. Thank you so much for uh, the chat. Thank you so much for all the questions from all of you and to Yorkit for organizing this event. And have a good night. Bye.